Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, as most of you know, actually as all of you should know, it's September. As some of you should know, that means it is my sixth month anniversary in Los Angeles. So obviously I thought I'd make this video and share with you guys what I've learned. Um, if you want to know more about the logistics of my moves, be sure to check out my blog videos, which will be in the top somewhere. And then um, check out my two month update video, which really covers all the logistics of moving to LA, getting an apartment, finding room, Mates, how much money I saved, all the like logistic details are in my two month video, which will be in my description box. So, overall, after six months in Los Angeles, <laughs> the most prevalent feeling I have is just pure exhaustion. Like, I don't think a lot of people realize that I came to Los Angeles with a car full of suitcases. You know, I didn't have a job when I got here, I didn't have any job prospects when I got here, I didn't have an apartment when I got here, I didn't have friends when I got here. Like, I really came here with me, my car, and my suitcases, and I literally had to build a life for myself from scratch. So these past six months have been literally me trying to like literally build a life for myself and that has been absolutely exhausting. <laughs> um, but it's been very rewarding too. It's nice to be able to have the opportunity to build a life from scratch because then you can literally make it exactly what you want. So these six months have mostly been about finding sustainable work that I enjoy that makes me happy which is this and my part-time job. And then um, I've also been working really hard to get an apartment. As you guys saw in my two month update video, I had three roommates and I was in um, a two bedroom apartment downtown. So now I'm in a studio by myself, I live in Hollywood and getting an apartment in Los Angeles is really, it's no joke. Like you need a minimum of two months rent and good credit. And if you don't have good credit, then you need a minimum of three months rent and probably a co-signer. Um, so my credit's okay, so I was able to get this apartment by myself, no co-signer, I only put down my first month's rent and my deposit, so two months. Um, but it took me like a good two months to find an apartment. So yeah, now I finally feel like I'm settled, I feel like my money is good, it's consistent, I can pay my rent every month, I pay my bills every month, I'm doing something I enjoy, and I have an apartment that I love that, you know, is pretty cute, obviously it's empty because I just moved in last month, but you know, I'm gonna have furniture soon, I'm hopefully, hopefully buying a TV this week. Snapchat fam free for me, y'all know I watch everything on my laptop and it's so rough. But yeah, so the first six months are literally just been getting settled for me and like getting my life in order. So I know a lot of people have been asking me about what my social life in Los Angeles is like. And again, actually no, I didn't even say this. And let me say that I personally am someone, I do not go out if I am not comfortable in my life. Like. I am not someone who can have 20 bucks in the bank and go to the club. I am just not that person. If I am clubbing, if I'm popping bottles, if I'm sipping champagne, celebrating life, getting lit, you best believe my shit at home is in order. So when it comes to a social life, I have just explained to you, for the last six months, my home has not been in order. I didn't even have a home until last month. So. My social life has been bare, you know? Like, I've been honestly hustling. Like, I've been working, I've been saving money, I've been trying to get an apartment, I've been getting a job, I've been quitting jobs, I've been getting another job, I've been quitting another job. I haven't had time for a social life because I'm, like, getting my money and my home in order. I know a lot of people move to LA, and LA is fun, and it's glamorous, and it's exciting, and the beach is 20 minutes away all the time, and we always have good weather, but you cannot forget why you came to LA. Like, you can't say, oh, it's so fun and it's so beautiful, I'm gonna do whatever I want. No, because you could have taken a vacation if you wanted to party and sit on the beach. You didn't take a vacation. You know, you moved your whole life across the country, or at least I did. So I didn't look at this as a vacation. I looked at this as me building my life on the other side of the country by myself, and that did not leave me from for a social life. That's me personally, but I also know a lot of people who, um, again, focus on a social life and when it comes down to reality, those people I found were not in the best situation, whether, you know, having that extra money in the bank or having money in the bank period or, you know, being able to get an apartment. If you focus on a social life right when you get here and that's all you worry about and you're like trying to make friends and be cool and go out and have fun, your reality at home <laughs> might look a little different. 
And I also don't want to put it out there like I'm better than people. Like I didn't make the exact same mistakes when I got here. I did. <laughs> like you guys follow me on Snapchat. You know I had a blast when I first moved to LA. Like I got blackout drunk my very first night here, which was amazing. But again, it took me six months to get an apartment. It took me six months to be able to afford an apartment because I spent my first two or three months, you know, with my old friends, Sydney and Adriana. Like if you guys saw in my vlogs, you know exactly who they are. In the past, I didn't pick being an adult, and I remember having a very low bank account, being very stressed out about apartments because I just couldn't afford it, and my credit card bills were due, and so was my apartment deposit, and it's it's a it's, it's it was spiral. So you should just focus on getting your life in order and then working on your social life. So another part of social life is dating. <laughs> I have been on three or four like official dates. I've obviously met guys on them now. It hasn't gone anywhere um and i have typically found and this again is from my days that i've been on with the guys that i've met from la i personally feel like guys in la are a little or are very superficial um people in la in general are very superficial but i'll get to that and then i also feel like they're very impatient yeah so snapchat fam knows that last week i was actually given a date rape drug and it was terrifying i woke up in jail I had no recollection of what happened the entire night. And that's just an example of what I mean by the guys who are just impatient. Like, you don't have to give someone a date rape drug to sleep with her. You could maybe take her to dinner, you know, get to know her, maybe. No one slept with me, by the way. I, I, got a, I ended up in jail because I tried to go home while I was on the drugs, whatever drugs he gave me. It was a whole thing and I don't wanna go into it. Hashtag Carrie Pepper Spray. But um, again, it's just like, in LA, if a guy in a bar wants to sleep with you, he will just spike your drink. Whereas in my reality, any other state in the world, if a guy wants to sleep with you, he might ask you to dinner. And you know, you have to be wary and conscious of that difference between locations. LA is a little bit more cutthroat, a little bit more impatient, and a lot more superficial. Moving here made me feel so insecure because like literally this is where celebrities live this is where models live so you see celebrities and models like on a daily basis you know what i mean so it will affect your confidence time and time again also when guys are literally ignoring you because they think you're fat or you know when people are not speaking to you because you're not the most attractive girl in the room like that will also affect your confidence and those two things are so common here which is so sad like I have never lived anywhere where your weight had such a clear and direct link to your worth to someone. And I'm not gonna start a whole thing on it, but I feel like your weight is something that's so personal and it's something that is so deeply rooted in who you are and the life decisions you make and things like that. But it, it sucks when you're judged on something that kind of encompasses and displays to the world everything that you are and you do. You know, it's what you eat, what you drink, do you exercise, you don't, that's all, Kind of bundled up in your weight and so it's hard and it sucks and people judge you for that but again la is superficial and it is what it is you're either gonna lose weight or you're not you're gonna you know feel better about yourself or you're not and i hate to put it in those blatant terms but if you're gonna move to la that's something you need to know whatever insecurities you guys have this city will just magnify them like so much it's so so hard <laughs> but on a brighter note, um, and I did say, I feel like the weight is very personal and I feel like it's something that reflects your lifestyle and what you do. So <laughs> I'm uploading a video on Friday because a lot of you guys have noticed that I've lost weight and like, thank you so much because I'm very proud and I feel really good and I feel like very confident about my body right now, which is very nice. Um, so I'm going to be uploading a video on Friday that pretty much explains how I lost 30 pounds because yeah, your girl lost 30 pounds. Feeling good. So Friday's video will be on how I lost 30 pounds, how you can lose 30 pounds. It wasn't that hard. I don't really exercise that much. Um, so it's doable. So yeah, be sure to subscribe real quick and turn on the notifications so that you'll get a notification to when I upload my how I lost 30 pounds video on Friday. And I just want to come back one more time to the superficiality of LA. And I want to emphasize because I think that I kind of put boys in a bad light and I was like, boys in LA are so shallow, they're so superficial. It's not just boys. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And again, this is all my opinion. This is all my experiences, what I've lived from LA. But I feel like the girls here 
because the guys are so superficial, the clubs are so superficial, the bars are so superficial. You literally will not get into a bar if you're not attractive, which I find ridiculous. Like a bar, at a club, a bar, a restaurant. If you are not pretty, you can't eat at a certain restaurant. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> but that shows to say that not only are the guys superficial, so are the girls. Because as they grow, when you go out with your friends, you want to get into clubs. You want to be able to eat at the nicer restaurants. You want for boys to like you. Like you want for people to speak to you. So even the girls here are like perpetuating the superficiality of it all. Is superficiality even? I don't know. But the girls here kind of perpetuate it because like no one wants not attractive friends when that's going to affect your social life. So it's the whole thing. And I have never, I will never dissuade anyone from moving to LA. But I will say, if you suffer from depression, or if you have an eating disorder, or if you are not already in a healthy state, and I mean healthy, like I have very high self-confidence normally, and LA kind of gut punched me and like knocked me to the ground. And I'm someone who's very confident, is what I'm saying. And I, you know, I didn't leave my house for a while there, because I didn't want people to see how bad I was. Just I'm not, I've never been fat, actually. Just never been skinny. Anyway, so if you have any type of self-doubt or insecurities and you don't have the means to work on them or you don't want to work on them or it will negatively affect you before you get the opportunity to work on it, I would not recommend Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the most super, the most superficial place in the world. And for reference, if you know, Cornell, which is my, where I went to college, is ranked the douchiest college in America. LA is douchier than Cornell. Let me repeat that. Los Angeles is douchier than the douchiest college in America. Please take my word for it. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is weed. Marijuana, marijuana, Mary Jane, MJ, all that good stuff. Snapchat fam, <laughs> Snapchat fam knows that I now smoke weed. I did not smoke weed before I moved to LA, um, like at all. I actually hated weed, like I thought I was allergic to it. I had a very bad reaction, it's just not ideal for me. Maybe it's because Cali is good weed. Maybe it's because Cali weed is legal weed. I don't really know, but I do know that I have crazy insomnia and when I first moved here, my roommate smoked weed and I couldn't sleep and they would party all night. So I started smoking weed too because it would knock me out and I would go to sleep. And yeah, it did knock me out and I did, you know, get rid of my sleeping problems. But I've also found that weed is very good for you, like, spiritually. It doesn't just heal, like, physical ailments. Like, if you're sad, smoke some weed. You might get sadder, but it's probably because, like, your body is processing or your mind is processing those thoughts and you've been trying to bury or get rid of or do whatever. Like, if you're confused about something, smoke some weed, you will get some clarity. So one of my favorite things to do actually is to, and this is something I do pretty much every night, one, because I smoke weed to sleep, so it makes sense that I do it at night, and two, because I think it's just awesome. What I do is I will pack a bowl um, of my favorite Mary Jane, whatever, I will probably smoke um, a sativa because I do like to be more creative during this process, um, and it will kind of make you more sleepy, which was great for when I was trying to get away from my roommate, so I just would smoke to go into a coma. But now that I kind of want to be functioning and awake while I'm awake, I smoke sativas. If you want a video about California weed, I suppose I could make one for you because I guess I'm a pro now. But um, yeah, it's a whole. I could do a video on that itself, but I won't. But yes, yeah, so one of my favorite things to do is to pack a bowl and read a book and just think. Like maybe write in your diary. One of the books I'm reading right now is um, 20 something, 20 everything. I'm reading it for a while. It's one of those books that you read and you have to write stuff down too. So I only get through like three pages a day because I have to like take notes with it. Um, but I only will do that when I'm high because it's just, it opens your mind and just opens you up spiritually and your mind becomes less cluttered and you can kind of get exactly to the thoughts that your brain is trying to tell like your heart if that makes sense i feel like your everyday processes can kind of cloud your judgment or cloud your perception of yourself and when you're high it goes away also because it's legal here everyone and i mean everyone in los angeles smokes weed 
all the time. That's all anyone here does. It's like, I'm surprised there's not a big marijuana cloud above LA because everyone here is high all the time. It's a little strange. I had a friend who didn't smoke weed and every time anyone was smoking, people would offer it to her because here smoking weed is like, drinking wine you know it's like you want a glass you want to hit it like it's the same thing so yeah you should try it it's great for your social life i went on a huge tangent but i'm new to the the marijuana game and um i'm a fan so i feel like the tangent was worth it why not i'm not a stoner am i a productive no i'm not a stoner i am productive yeah so Aside from <laughs> the whole week talk, I also feel like LA has made me a much more spiritual person, if that makes sense. Like, I'm still not religious, but I definitely have a deeper connection to God. I, you know, I have a deeper connection to myself, um, and I feel very at peace, which, which is a good thing. And it's not something I've felt in a very long time. So, like, spiritually, LA has been just healing for me. And I think that comes with, you know, Moving here and making mistakes. I have failed so many times that you guys don't know about. I have tried to do something and failed miserably so many times since I've gotten here that now when I fail, it doesn't even matter to me. It's like, oh, I made a mistake, cool. Oh, that didn't happen, cool. I'm just gonna try again because here you're gonna make mistakes. Things are not gonna go your way every time. And the quicker you understand that and the quicker that you just let it slide off the, your shoulder, the happier you will be if every failure and you know if every time I applied for an apartment and spent $40 on an application fee and I didn't get it and I said Leah you suck you're terrible you you your credit is horrible you are poor you need more money like if I spoke to myself that way every single time I failed I would be in tears every day it's on a positive note that has also taught me that really anything that you go through you can learn from and if you don't learn from it then really it's only a disservice to yourself and it's a mistake so not only am I okay with failure and I'm okay with making mistakes, I really don't even mind them because I know that if I learn from it, I will improve as a person and that will put me in a better position in the future. So I kind of, I welcome my mistakes and I welcome failure and I would try to avoid them, but if I can't, I know it's okay. Um, and I've also learned, again, how to trust myself, how to be okay with failure, but in addition to that, and I think this was the biggest, biggest, biggest accomplishment for me spiritually was I really learned how to forgive people. When you are surrounded by people and you are surrounded by external forces on you, it's very easy to blame others for your problems. You say, well, she did this and as a reaction that happened and so it's her fault. But when you're alone, like me, I am literally alone in LA. I'm okay with that, but I am. <laughs> so when you're in that situation, you cannot blame anyone else for what happens in your life. You are the only one responsible for what happens to you, to your life, to your body. You think when I woke up in jail, I wasn't like, fuck the dude that gave me a date rape drug? Of course I was. But again, that's my fault for accepting drinks from a guy without watching him buy it and walk over to me. You know, learn from your mistakes. I forgive him. It's not his fault. He's not an easy target because I was an easy target. That is nobody's fault but my own. So him, I forgive. Me, I'm still working on it. I'm still learning. But you have to learn how to forgive people. People will wrong you. How you react to it will completely change the outcome. And that is so true. And so I really... I don't hold anyone accountable for my life except for me. I don't hold my parents accountable. I don't hold my friends accountable. I don't hold my ex accountable. Nobody. I am responsible for myself. You are responsible for yourself. And when you move to LA, that will be clear as day. So a lot of you have been asking what is my one piece of advice for you know moving to Los Angeles. And if I could give you one thing that you have to listen to, what would it be? And I think that that would be to remember why you came here. And like remember what your goals are but don't get stuck on the how right so i wouldn't really focus on the means to getting where you want to go i would just wake up every single morning with a thought in your mind that i am going to hustle today i'm going to work hard today i'm going to work towards what i want today and figure out how to do it but yeah, so I will see you guys on Friday when I upload my How I Lost All Your Talents video. Be sure to subscribe 
you know, turn on those notifications so that you'll know exactly when it goes up. And if you don't want to do either of those things, I'm going to promise I'm not offended. And I'm just going to ask that you like this video if you liked it. That is all. So I'll see you guys on Friday and I hope you have a great week. Bye.